I am posting the video now because I have just hit 30 subscribers. Thank you so much guys and hopefully you find this video useful. Hey, what are you doing there? I'm following uh, Ian Hubert's tutorial on motion tracking. Can I see your footage? Okay, sure. Wait, 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 wait. Stop right there. Even I can't track what you've got there. Look, it's a clean floor and you've barely got any contrasting tracking points. What you want to do is you want to get a piece of paper of some sort, draw little dots on it, and then maybe film that sort of thing, because that's going to be much easier to track. And if you're a beginner like you, you don't want to be tracking that. Even I can't. Okay, sure. Have a look at that. Okay, sorry, I'm now pro at tracking. Like, have a look at this video. Brilliant, but just one more thing. Does it really look like it's in real life? Well, um, not really, but it looks cool. Those objects aren't reflecting in the context of its surroundings. You need to capture some sort of HDRI of your surroundings. What's that? An HDRI is sort of a 360 panorama, but also has the light information, therefore making your objects look like it's integrated into the real world. You can get an app called Google Street View, which is already in Android phones, it's also for iOS though, link in the description. Wait, I'm in a video? Well, I thought it would be a good idea to share to the entire of YouTube your failings in motion tracking so they can laugh at you and not make the same mistakes. Wait, I thought you were me, but... Anyways, back to the HDRIs. We need to go outside for this, and since I told you you're in a YouTube video, I might as well just go. Now, all you need for this is a phone and an environment. And saying you have captured uh, a motion track or this, you've got it already for the um, environment. You want to go to the exact same place of where you filmed it, um, roughly the same spot, and then you need to take panorama. And now, if it's only for reflections of your objects, then you could just use a normal panorama thing on your phone, which usually in these cases, um, most of my viewers will probably have a phone, and so I have it on this. But if you are going to have it in the shot, so uh, you're going to display it like uh, with your objects, then you'll need to take a photosphere, which is more than 360, because it also captures the top and the bottom. And so um, otherwise you're going to have this weird stretching at the top. So you can use, um, you can use Google Street View, which is for uh, iOS and Android. But if you're just doing it for reflections, then make sure to use the panorama on your phone. Uh, so I'm just going to choose panorama on my phone. Save your scene. Sometimes in Blender 2.8, it crashes when you add an environment texture. Now, with your USB cable that your phone came with, plug it into your computer and get the image of your panorama off it. Make sure to cut and paste and save it in a folder. For the next step, go to the shading workspace or open a new window with shading. Make sure it is set to world. Now add environment texture and load in your panorama. If it looks quite stretched, then if you have Node Wrangler enabled, you can click Ctrl T and you can play around with the scales. Now do the basic thing with adding objects and making your camera in the right place and aligning it so it looks like it's in real life, and there are just a few more steps. To make sure that the image is in the final render, make sure to enable transparent in your film settings. To show off the HDRI, make sure to grab one of your objects, add a new material, and turn the roughness down and turn the metallic up so you can see the reflection of the HDRI in the object. Now go to the compositing workspace and click use nodes, add an alpha over node. Now you can add a movie clip with the reference of your video that you took for the HDRI. Now you can alpha over it with the render layers which should already be there. And then just do a quick render with two samples so you can see what it looks like. Now do control shift left click and it will give you a viewer node. You can mess around with a few more settings such as denoise and then you're done. Dude, that's going to be way too hard to motion track. 
if you don't have something like a thousand FPS, you're not going to get a soul bearer less than a hundred. Okay. Look, it doesn't have to be like this. It can just be circular motion, but just not too aggressive. There we go. Well, I'm guessing you don't need my help anymore. Look, come and have a look at this. Wait one sec. Two thousand years later. Right, open up Blender. Wait, it is not there. Ow! If you're doing long-term projects, that means you're going to have to shut down Blender and work on it the next day. You have to use an image sequence. How? Well, you could do some FFmpeg coding, but I prefer to do it all in Blender. Show me. Open a new scene in Blender. Video editing. Drag and drop the footage. Trim with the sides. Set the length of the clip to however you want. You see it looks quite washed out. Blender does some default colour grading with it. Colour management settings. Standard. Change the frame rate. Set to render as a PNG or JPEG with zero compression. Then set an output directory with the name as frame underscore. This is to do with indexing, which is a pro gamer move that will write the number of the frame it's rendering. Change the samples as one since all we're doing is pumping out images. And render animation. Or control F12 with your pro. I love this wall. Look how many tracking points are on it. I could get such a good camera soul. I know, it's great. Well, I don't even know this. You see, if you have an old brick wall, it has lots of inconsistencies between these gaps. Some of them are falling out, some of them are inwards, lots of indents and that. But if you have a new brick wall, like this one, you can see it's quite easy for Blender to jump from this one to this one because they all look the same. Okay, maybe I'll go and buy a medieval cottage then. There we go. What's happening? Do you like the alignment on my plane? It looks like it's in real life. Let's have a look. Wait, what's happening? It's it's not sticking to the ground. What, what soul bearer? Like, 0 0.3? Wait, get out of the camera, you. You've moved the plane instead of the camera. The reason why it's not sticking is that the plane is in an unrealistic position. When you film the footage, were you walking on a steep slope? No, but the camera made it look like it. A quick hack is to select everything, then go to different views, sides, top and bottom, in the X and Y axes, until your plane is in the centre, with no rotation. Now you have done the inverse. Although everything looks like it was before, the camera is now in the correct place. Play the clip. I followed your instructions. I made them all different colours so the blender doesn't hop between them. Dude, you see here, all of the points are on the same surface, but you want to distribute them in 3D space as well. Remember the parallax changes? The camera may not be able to tell if it's going up and down or if it's rotating. Okay, maybe I should probably buy like a long medieval cottage instead. Wait, is Blender not responding? No, 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 no. I crashed. No, it's fine. I can make that back up again. Wait. I didn't save the scene. Oh! Want some help? I'm getting a silver of like a hundred.
Dude, you've got some pretty good tracks, actually. It's just that one that's letting it down. Make sure to go to Clip Display, and then go down to Info. Then you can see the average solve error of each one. This way you can turn down the weight, or you can just delete the tracks, and you'll get a much better solve error. Can I have some help? Sure. I followed all your tips, but there's just something slightly off. Ah, you see here, you have a lot of parallax and perspective. However, Blender automatically sets the trackers up just to find the location of the points. However, other options called motion models, such as perspective and affine, also find the rotation, the location, and the shearing, and the scale. Look, here's an example. So I have a basic scene in Blender, uh, which doesn't have too much perspective. So we have location, which is the one uh, that was set, set up by Blender as standard, 0 0.3669. Now that is pretty good. Now we have affine, which takes care of the shearing, but it always is symmetrical. We have that at 0 0.2012, which is pretty good. But then we have perspective at the end, which is 0 0.4719. And the reason why this is so bad is, most of the time, it's never symmetrical because perspective doesn't have the restrictions and it, it's allowed to get all of the points and move them around wherever it wants, not taking into account the context around it. And so that's why usually perspective isn't so good in most cases, but affine is a very good one to use. Wait, 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 one second day. <laughs> I made the wall, shoot. The brick wall! Too many repetitious patterns! <gasps> Too many brick walls. <laughs> oh, what Look, if you have an old brick wall, which isn't like this one, that sounds dumb. I'm gonna, you're gonna stop now. Look, here are some examples that I did just before this bit. No. So, uh, this is a few... <gasps> that better not fall. Now, you see, Perspective did the worst in this case. And that's because my standard scene, it didn't have much... I... Could you see that? I think I might have spat. And then we have Perspective at 0 0.4719, which really is pretty good, but compared to the other ones, it's a no-no. Because... <laughs> it's a no no. No 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 Blender crashed! <laughs> I know. What's that? What's that? What's that? Wait, what's happening? It's not sticking. Sorry. Wait, get out of the camera view. Oh wait no, I wasn't supposed to follow you. Come and have a look at this! No, you don't move the camera, it's just a small, it's just a... There we go. Have a look at that. Surely I'm a pro tracking now. No, I mean, seriously.